All right, guys, I wanted to talk a little bit about Cassia and Joanna. Um, this is kind of an age-old combo that was used a long time in HEC, and then Cassia kind of started losing a lot of viability in HEC, and it was only kind of a, a gimmicky combo that was used until her rework. She then got reworked, and she was great on her own, and she didn't need no Joanna helping her out. But... Um, I did say that there is a Cassia build that is good on her own and a Cassia build that is good into a w with a blind team um, or a heavy blind team. And we haven't seen a lot of usage of this build um, into that heavy blind team. So, Joanna, Cassia, and potentially another blind hero if you want it, but you don't need to overkill it. Um, is it still good? When should it be used? And uh, what should you expect out of it? So after a rework, a lot of people stopped using this particular synergy because this talent right here, Ring of Leech, got nerfed a little bit. So what Ring of Leech did in the past was basic attacks against um, your primary, primary target heals for 15. And if the enemy's blinded, it affects your other abilities. What this used to do was... Um, everything that you did, your, your basic attacks and your, your abilities would heal you, but it would heal you for more if they were blinded. So when this got nerfed, a lot of people didn't really think that comboing with a blind would be as good, and people just go Q-build with inner light. However, I was still looking at it from the sense of, well, blinding, because of blinding light... Um, Cassia does 20% more damage to blinded targets, and I'm like, I still think there's a world where a heavy blind comp could have a lot of synergy. So, and, and my world was auto attack build. Auto attack build seemed pretty strong, and having a flat 20% increased damage, plus healing off of your auto attack damage, um, seemed like a solid option. Um, and so... I, I just figured that it was going to be an option. And we also get to see some pretty cool talents like Gloves of Alacrity, which you get that extra two range as long as you're moving around and have that 30 armor. Um, and then you also can still take Martial Law, a talent we haven't been able to take in a while. Um, and what this talent does is basic attacks against enemy hero do 1% of their max health. And that also counts for the bounces of your level 1 talent. But it's increased to 3% to stunned, rooted, or slowed targets. Something that you can accomplish pretty well with your team comp. Um, and, uh, and so I was like, this build still can work. But I just haven't seen a lot of teams utilize it. So this is the final match of the... Uh, it's kind of like one of the, the CCL open player spotlight games. Where they were able to make their own teams and spotlight their teams. On the left side, we have ACA, uh, Anti-Clown Association. Uh, there's, it's their for, full Storm Division team, uh, with the exception of their healer. Uh, Valimar is, is replacing um, Shredded um, from this in this particular matchup. Then on the right side, we have a team going by the names of Dads Who Game, and uh, there is four ex-pro players, uh, as well as, well, Three X HEC players and one X Pro player. Um, well, three HEC players. Sorry, two. One two. One World Series player, two HEC players, and three CCL players. Yes, there's overlap. Um, a solid team and a team that had beaten the previous Storm Division winning team and also a team filled with uh, ex-CCL players. So overall, both teams solid. This is the last game of the last series. And this is where people put everything on the line. They have to show up if they want to get drafted for CCL. And this is what they decided to bring to it. A, an old strategy of Cassia and Joanna. So I've actually been recommending this team um, to a lot of players. Cassia is very contested, but Joanna and uh, and Anduin are not very contested. So I generally recommend, because I love the combo between Joanna and Anduin, whether you go um, Falling Sword or you go Blessed Shield, I think both combo really well with Light Bomb either way. Um, the, the Shield is a little bit easier to do. Falling Sword is a little bit more complex. But I think that they're both great options. So... 
I wanted to talk a little bit about that, but what I've recommended for teams is if they want to run that um, that combo, that Anduin and Joanna, I recommend first picking Cassia, and then second pick, when you have two picks, grabbing that Joanna and Anduin. Then you end up having a blind comp with a lot of synergy and a lot of combos. Um, and so that's basically where we are with this particular... Uh, this particular draft except for instead of and when they went with deckard which still can follow up with blessed shield with his own root not quite a light bomb combo but it still works out and it's still pretty consistent so um so what does this comp do it's a synergy comp and so what i recommend is when i when people draft i always recommend they either draft combos or synergy um and then they they make sure that their their draft is based on the map but within each map i think every competitive team should have a synergy comp or a combo comp built for that particular map this is a synergy comp basically there are two heroes that just work really well together but they don't necessarily like have a big combo that's game ending um joanna should be almost permanently increasing um cassia's damage by 20. When Joanna is not blinding the target, then Cassie is blinding the target, and then hopefully Joanna is back to blinding the target again. Then, the rest of the team comp should be about triggering the martial law, and that way she's doing a lot of damage throughout these fights. So, at the start of this, she's basically just getting siege damage. They're up level 10s. Um, they've just been covering the, the macro. Kelsier on their team on Hanzo has been covering the macro for him. And they've just been doing whatever they can to keep their team ahead. And they're utilizing this lead to keep them uh, pushing forward. So I'm also going to bring up uh, Joanna's build really quick. Just so that you guys can see. Joanna didn't overcommit into the blinds. What I mean by that is there are a lot of talents you can take to increase the duration of your blinds. Or to lower the cooldown of your blinds. You don't need to overcommit to that. A lot of people think when you're building like a synergy like this. You need to go full commit to it. But you really don't. You can if you want to, but again, it's just a synergy. It's not a giant combo where everything needs to work out the way that you want it to work out. It's just a synergy. And it's the same thing. A lot of people think in this, you've got to draft Lili to, to continue the blinds. And while that could definitely work if the enemies are going auto attack heavy, um, it's not necessary. And so I do want to talk about that particular thing as well. When should you draft this? Uh, the first thing that I would say is Tychus right now in the meta is very popular. Auto attack Diablo, losing popularity, but still some people are using it. And there are a couple other auto attack heroes that are popular in the meta. But Tychus is popular and he has to stand still a lot while attacking. Blinding Tychus is relatively easy with Cassia and it's even easier with Joanna. So you can blind it and basically have it to where Tychus can never really get a kill without landing some pretty crazy grenades. Um, and so the more you commit into your trait build on on um, on Tychus, the easier it is to simply blind him and get away from it. In that particular case, that was a great APOC combo, leading to uh, Cassia being stunned until she died. But I actually think that this combo between Cassia and Joanna is very strong in the meta right now. Um, Cassie is really hard to kill outside of just being purely stun locked, and bruisers don't have a lot of long duration stuns. So when people are running like tank double bruiser, Cassie can kind of just make her way through these teams without really having too much of an issue, and she does have percent health talents at level 16 if you're going to go the auto attack build. So seeing the enemies going double tank or triple bruiser opens up the possibility of having charge strikes bounce between their front line and doing a potential of 3% of their max health per attack and every third attack doing 3% of three different members on their team's um, attack. And so we do see this auto attack build, a, a really cool build into um, a, a double tank triple bruiser comp and also a really cool build um, into auto attackers because you get to go a little bit more blind heavy, which is really fun. Um, now let's talk about the build that he goes. Level 1, Charge Strikes. 
gives you that splash damage every third attack. You get 15% more attack speed. Um, and then every third basic, you also do more damage. Ring of Leech. Your basic attacks will always heal you. And when they are blinded, so will your Lightning Fury and your Fend. Surge of Light. That is just a really solid talent if you're just trying to run away from people and just popping extra damage while you're avoiding the the extra damage. For auto attack build, I actually kind of recommend Grounding Rod. Um, you lose a little bit of burst damage, but that slow is going to allow you to proc your martial law on your own, so you don't need your team. Um, but there also is the world about going Seraph's him as well. Basic attacks against a primary enemy, grant mana, and reduce your blinding light cooldown. So I think there's a lot of different options you can go. You can go with more blinds, um, and we see right here just a lot of extra damage. So I don't think it's necessary to take Surge of Light if you're going to be going auto attack build. Stutter stepping in between every attack is just necessary for um, the, the Cassia players to do. It's just an inevitable truth, and one of the reasons why a lot of people don't like playing Cassia for very many matches in a row because it's exhausting to play Cassia. Yes, you have to stutter step on every hero, but you can take breaks on other heroes. Cassia always needs to be moving or you lose that armor. Um, in this particular build, you're also gonna lose your attack range. But I do think Seraph him is, is better in auto attack build than Surge of Light, especially since you're gonna be further away from the enemies with Gloves of Alacrity. Um, but he still felt the need to go with Surge of Light. Could just be the range of the enemy heroes. Um, but yeah, I definitely think Seraph's Him would be the number one option for auto attack build. Grounding could be a potential if you don't have a lot of slows or roots or anything. Um, and then Surge would be the third option. But I, I prefer it for more of a spellcaster build. He goes with Ball Lightning for the extra sustained damage. His team already has a ton of CC, so he doesn't need any more CC. And then finally, we go into Valkyrie. Oh, I apologize. And finally, we go into Valkyrie, um, which is... Uh, sorry, he's not going to Valkyrie, but Valkyrie is the other option that you can go if your team has a lot of CC or, or doesn't have a lot of CC and you need to kind of pull people into your team. Okay, I got to take like a drink of water or something. I apologize, guys. Getting a little off track. Now that he's level 16, I want to show you guys the damage really quick. He's been beneath the Hanzo basically this entire game. Um, and he's also been kind of fighting back and forth with Tychus. Even with him blinding Tychus a decent amount of the time, um, he's been behind the Tychus. He just barely passed up above the Tychus, and he's at this point with Hanzo. Now that he has martial law... And we've got Deckard, who can be slowing people, rooting people. We've got Joanna, who can be slowing people, stunning people. Um, and, and, I mean, just between those two primarily, we also have the big stun from, uh, from Hanzo. Watch how fast his damage is going to just start jumping when we get into these next two fights. So again, he focuses on clearing up the objectives. Hanzo mostly focuses on clearing the, the waves. And uh, he'll sometimes handle the camps just because he can do it a tad bit faster. Um, the early portions of the game on Cassia, you just want to basically be stacking if you're in Q build. Otherwise, just focusing on, on other things. So he quickly does a lot of damage onto, uh, onto Skog. Kelsier finishes him off with a really nice WQ auto um, by jumping in there. And uh, did about 40% of... 40% of Tychus' health in Odin with, with that extra armor that was available. So Kelsier, very solid player. This video will probably post after the draft, um, after the CCL draft. So, I mean, hopefully Kelsier, hopefully all of these members on both teams get drafted by teams because the this was the this supposed to be the show match to show teams um, who's available and how good they are in a coordinated environment. And both of these teams stomped all the other teams in the, uh, in the bracket. And so hopefully each member of both of these teams gets drafted in, in the Season 2 of CCL. Um, but yeah, so um, this uh, early game, you don't need to do much in this build. You can basically just focus on macro because you don't need to get stacks. Um, if you are in this build, you kind of want to get stacks early game. But in in uh, Q build, you want to get stacks. But in this particular build, you can do whatever you want to. So I recommend focusing on macro until you get to that martial law power spike 
or you can start getting that extra range and you can heal and you're i mean you can see he's healing a lot off of every basic attack against buildings against heroes against whatever and he's keeping that armor up the entire time and he's just doing his best to be as annoying as possible throwing his q in between uh, auto attacks and making sure that he's getting auto attacks off a lot of siege damage is coming out from him um and so early game he sieged bot, got bot for it for free, giving his team an experience lead for the rest of the game. And, uh, and now he's just going in with the, the auto attacks. He loses his armor, but he ends up throwing off his ult and trying to build back up his armor. He has to step out of the fight. Once he steps out of the fight, he starts getting a lot of his health back because he's hitting targets with his basic attacks, healing for a lot, and he did pick up one potion that healed him for a pretty decent amount. I believe there was also an Ancient Blessings going that was able to keep him healed as well. I think the ball lightning um, instead of Valkyrie is definitely one that I, I go back and forth on. But now if we were to look at this fight. Okay. He was beating Hanzo. And he was stunned for a decent portion of this fight. Um, even still, he shot up. So Hanzo shot up by about um, 4,000 damage. Right? Well, no. Hanzo shot up. So just between the last time. he was at, Hanzo was at 36. And uh, Cassie was at 34. Or no, Hanzo was at 33 and Cassie was at 34. So Hanzo went up by about 9,000 damage. And Cassia went up by about 14,000 damage in just two fights, basically. And it was realistically only one fight and then a little bit of poke here and there. So once you get Martial Law, you do an incredible amount of damage, even though it doesn't really look like it. Did it look like he was doing that much damage in that last fight? No. But three enemies are dead now. And he shot up by 14,000 hero damage. That's an incredible amount of damage. And even though it didn't look like he got any of those kills, things died. And so, yes, he's three levels ahead. But part of what got him three levels ahead is that he was getting so much value out of Cassie in the early portions. And just that, that constant blind between himself or with Joanna is a really great synergy. So... Um, again, Joanna didn't overcommit into the blinds, didn't go the cooldown reduction at 7, didn't go the increased blind duration at 7, um, and he didn't overcommit either, even though I do think that he definitely could have gone with Seraph's him, and if you are going to run a blind heavy comp, you need this talent. Surge of Light didn't get a lot of value this game, so I do recommend if you are going to go with this Cassia Joanna build, grab Seraph's him, um, and also run maybe something that, that slows a little bit more often. I think that there's the potential of running Mei as well um, instead of Joanna, or even with combination of Joanna, if you're on a map that you don't really need a Bruiser Bruiser, but there is a Bruiser-ish Mei build that could work. But that's it, guys. Does this comp still work? Yes. I think that synergy comps are underrated right now, comps that just work really well together that aren't necessarily a combo, but are still really good synergy. Um, Keldazad and, and Malfury and to, to get Keldazad stacked faster by using Innervate. It's not like a huge combo, but it is a synergy. You can turn that into a combo by using someone like Malganus to sleep people um, so that it's easier to land the roots for the combo, but synergy comps exist and they are very valuable. So hopefully you guys can, I might do a full video on synergy comps and combo comps, but for the most part, this is the most common synergy comp and it works out really, really well. And I think it's very underrated, especially into this meta that's a lot beefier. So if you find yourself going against triple bruiser, double tank, um, and potentially with something like a Tychus or Zul'jin that you can blind, I highly recommend pulling out the Joanna Cassia or potentially a May Cassia um, and uh, bringing out the blinds. And, and it's still very, very strong. I mean, not that Cassia needs more comps that she can fit into because she's already very strong, but that does give you guys another option to work with. Joanna Cassia is still a solid comp. Thank you guys so much for watching and feel free to check out the other videos.